I don't believe coincidence, I believe things happen for a reason. Whatever I'm put into, I give my all for it. And, you know, I'm just thinking, what if we went to Alaska? Like, maybe I would have been maybe a professional snowboarder or something, or a professional skier, or would have fell in love with dog sledding, or I don't, I don't know. But we went to, to Germany and fell in love with soccer. I think that was the reason. I think I was maybe meant to be a soccer player. <laughs> Put us in any situation, we're gonna, we're gonna make, it. make it. It doesn't matter how complicated, congratulations. congratulations. It's in order, cause we're on our way up to the top, 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 top. top. The moment whenever I first actually played soccer, way you could actually see me and say, okay, he has something. For me, that was when I when I moved to Germany and my brother made, made the first friend. I don't know how, but he did and his friend invited us to the school. And you know, all these guys, we get together and we play soccer. And of course, my, my mom and my parents, being my parents, they had, take, take your little brother with you. Okay, my brother took me with him. I don't really believe in, in coincidence. I believe in things happen for a reason. That's something that changed, you know, the direction that my life was going in. So many things could have went to where I didn't go to that gym that day. And just so happened, I went with him and you know, I was playing with these 18, 19, 20 year old kids and my brother also being, I think, I don't know, 13 at the time, 14. And I'm playing indoor with these guys, blah, kicking it, asking for the ball, you know, wanting it and not being afraid or, you know, just so happened my first soccer coach was there, David Mulo. You know, I ended up speaking to my mom and, and Went up to the tryouts in a polo t-shirt, right after school, polo t-shirt, khaki shorts, and American football cleats. Ended up, you know, doing my tryout and everything and made the team. And I think our first first game, I scored, you may not believe me, uh, David wouldn't let me lie, I scored maybe eight or nine goals. My first game, and I think that would be like a moment that if you were to make a, a story about where it all started, a big monumental moment of my life, it would probably be me going across to that gym and, and picking up soccer for the first time. Smooth freshness. I played U17 in the national team, but I had, I had been in the national team for quite some time, U13, U14. I was in there with the, with the kids like Christian Pulisic, Haji Ride, uh, Joshua Perez. At that, those moments were big names. Coming up to the U17s, they have a residency program. I'm sitting watching the academy playoffs and I get the email. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to the residency. Tell me, I'm going to residency. Like, when I see my friends playing after the game, bro, I can't wait for residency. My coach at the time was Richie Williams. You know, I didn't go to the U17 qualifiers. I didn't go to the U17 World Cup. It's always overlooked. The coach calls me in the third semester and he says, yeah, Weston, we're not gonna invite you back in. Time goes by, time goes by, time goes by. We go to the academy playoffs, we go to the academy championship and you know the national team coaches are sitting and watching. I score a goal in the championship. Like, yeah, how's that? How's that feel, huh? And one of the best feelings I had was I got called into my first men's national team camp against Portugal, and flew in, and sure enough, the assistant coach, Richie Williams, my U17 coach, that overlooked me the whole time, said I wasn't ready, said I wasn't, you know, good enough, wasn't ready to compete at that level. Sure enough, trained throughout the week, line up against Portugal, I'm starting my debut, and I score. In Portugal, my debut, and I'm, I'm sitting there in my head, I'm like, I did it, like, I actually made it to this point when everyone doubted me. You remember whenever uh, they used to say you weren't good enough, you remember the phone call you got that said you're getting cut. You know, those are all the things that drove me to get to that point and I got there. And there was nothing that could have taken that moment away from me. You know, I, I was sitting there looking at the flag 
and just gave a little chuckle, just like, this is my time.